Jai Jai Shri Radhe. Dandavas to all the present Vaishnavas. We are continuing reading from the Saints of Raj. Chapter 5, the fifth story of Sri Sri Krishna Das Babaji. The night in which Sri Krishna Das Babaji left his body at Ranavari in a miraculous manner, Siddha Sri Jagannath Babaji and his disciple Bihari were staying in a cottage nearby. Towards the end of the night, Jagannath Das Babaji ex exclaimed, Bihari, go and see what is happening in the cottage of Sri Krishna Das Baba. Bihari was his servant. Bihari rushed to Krishna Das Baba's cottage. He found that the door of the cottage was latched from inside. Peeping through a small opening in the door, he saw that Krishna Das was sitting cross-legged and his body was ablaze with fire. Yet, he was coolly chanting Harinam as if nothing had happened. Bihari went back to Jagannath Das Baba and said, Baba, Krishna Das Baba's body is burning. Jagannath Das Baba shouted, Oh, Virahanal, Virahanal, fire of separation. Brajabashis, who lived in the neighborhood, came running. They broke open the door of the cottage. They saw that the fire had reached up to the throat of Sri Krishna Das Baba. Yet, he was chanting Harinam. The Brajabashis kept looking at him with dismay. He raised his two arms, burning like firewood, and said to them, I bless that no famine, no epidemic, no calamity will ever befall your village. When Jagannath Das Baba saw that fire had reached up to Sri Krishna Das Baba's throat, he prepared three wicks of cotton and placed them on his forehead. The wicks burned, and with them, the whole body of Sri Krishna Das Baba was reduced to ashes. Sri Krishna Das Baba's earlier name was Sri Krishna Prashad Chattopadhyaya. He was born in Mohammadapur, a village in district. Jasore in Bengal. His father's name was Gokul Chandra Chattopadhyaya. When negotiations regarding his marriage were on, he slipped away from home one night and walking all the way on foot came to Vrindavan. Just want to say one small thing on how he came. It reminds me of Kesha Baba. When Kesha Baba was just 13 years old in his village, our Kesha Baba here in the temple in Bengal also, 
Then there was Bambabaji who was preaching in his village and uh, he pre was preaching about Vrindavan and Radha Krishna. He was a Gaudiya Vaishnava. And uh, Kesha Baba, when nighttime, he, he told to us, he was doing massage to this Baba. The Baba was explaining different Leelas and telling about Vrindavan. Then in that moment, many things happened inside Kesha Baba, many realizations. And the next morning, he just took a few clothes and from Bengal, he came to Vrindavan, walking also. Walking? Yes. <laughs> My God. So our Kesha Baba also is not in the book, but it's a sense of Raj. So, 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 you know, this preaching person is Mohan Baba? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it was Raghavan Babaji. We can confirm afterwards. It's 13 years. Kesha Baba was 13 years. And then which year, maybe 90 uh, or 1978 or something? Uh, I think that was 30, 90, I don't know. I, I think before the beginning of 70s or no. Because, because uh, he's uh, can, can he's like kind of a later disciple of Guru. He was later, but he's younger than Guru, 10 years younger at least. 10 years? Yeah, at least 10, 12 years. And Radhamandas Babaji also is younger than Guru. Yeah, he's younger. He was younger, yeah. Younger. Okay. Okay, sir. In Vrindavan, he served Madar Mohanji of Madar Mohan Temple for some time and then went to Ranavari. Ranavari at that time was one of the thickest forests of Braj. He built a small courtier there and began to live in it. He practiced bhajan in the kutir throughout the day. In the evening, he went to the neighboring village for Madhukari. Since all the Brajabasis of the village revered him as a great saint, each insisted on his accepting some Madhukari from him, which Baba could not refuse. He got so much Madhukari that all along the way back to his kutir, he kept on giving away to the cows, keeping only a small quantity for himself. Because Baba had come to Braj at a very early age, he was not able to go to any other theatre place of pilgrimage. At the age of 50, he thought that he should once visit the four important Tirtas. Radharani then appeared to him in a dream and said, You have surrendered to me, so you need not to go anywhere else. Stay in Vrindavan and do bhajan. Here, you will attain everything. He explained away the dream and Radharani's advice as the product of his imagination and started on pilgrimage. When he reached Dwaraka, he got his body stamped with the Tapta Mudra, heated stamp, heated with fire and marked in the body, of Varakadish temple. But this is not in accordance with the principles of Raganuga Bhakti of Braj. Although mention is made of it in Hari Bhakti Vilas, 
the corpus of rituals and religious practices of the Vaishnavas. The day Baba returned to Ranavari, Radharani again appeared to him in a dream at night and said, Because you have taken the Tapta Mudra from Dvaraka, you are now included in the retinue of Satyabhama, wife of Dvarakadish or Krishna, the king of Dvaraka. You are no more fit for Braja. So go back to Dvaraka. This time, it did not appear to him that the dream was imaginary. The words of Radharani struck him like a thunderbolt. He didn't know what to do. He went to Siddha Krishnadas Baba of Govardhan for advice. As soon as Krishnadas Baba saw him, he gave him a warm embrace and said, Where have you been all these days? Sri Krishna Das replied, I had gone to Dwarka. See, I have taken Tapta Mudra. Oh, then from today, you are so exalted that I cannot even touch you. You are the Sevika, the female attendant of the most exalted queen of Dwaraka, while I am the Dasi, female servant of a cowardice of Raja, said Baba Krishna Das, seeking deeply and stepping a few step backs. There were at that time a number of other Sita Mahatmas in Braj. Sri Krishna Das Baba went to them and sought their advice. They replied, You have to do as Radharani has ordered. How can we say anything against her injunction? Sri Krishna Das Baba returned to Ranavari disappointed and broken hearted. He gave up food and drink and confined himself to his kutir. The fire of repentance and separation, Viraha, from Radharani was continually burning in his heart. Three months passed like this. Then the fire came out. Within three days, it reached up to the throat. The fourth day, his entire body was reduced to ashes. After several days, came Baba's god brother, Sri Premdas Babaji. He lay prostrate before the ashes of Baba in obeisance and said, Dada, brother, you did not take firewood for me. I am now giving it. He placed a log of wood near his ashes. The wood started burning and soon got mixed with the ashes. Sri Krishna Das Baba left his body on Amavasya in the Mount of Pausa. Even now, on that day, the Brajabhasis of Ranavari celebrate his anniversary by organizing a grand festival to which all the Vaishnavas of Raj are invited. Even now, on account of the blessings of Baba, 
the village remains free from the onslaught of epidemics and famine. One might ask, why Radharani, who is so benign and merciful, became so hard on Sri Krishna Das Baba? Why did she ask him to go and live in Varaka simply because he had taken the Tapta Mudra mm -hmm. from the temple of Varkadish? The answer is that Sri Krishna Das Baba was sailing on two boats. Raganuga Bhakti, which is inseparably connected with Raj, where Madhurya predominates to the extent of eclipsing Aishwarya altogether, and ritualistic bhakti of Dwaraka, where Madhurya is mixed with Aishwarya. In Bharat, Krishna is a cowboy boy. The peacock feather he wears as his crown and his flute are both the emblems of Madhurya. In Varaka, Krishna is the ruler or governor. The crown he wears and the weapons he wields are the emblems of Aishwarya. In Braj Bhakti, Madhurya mix with Aishwarya as no place. Radha is not satisfied with bhakti in which Aishwarya has any role to play. She did not refrain from expressing her dissatisfaction, even with Krishna, of meeting him in Kurukshetra, where he appeared as a king with his entourage and not as a coward with his flute. Sri Krishna Das Baba's attachment with Varaka must have proved an obstacle in his attainment of celestial Vrindavan and the holy feet of Radha and Krishna, along with the highest bliss and the richest and most complete spiritual life implied in such attainment. Radharani helped him remove the obstacle through the fire of Anutap, repentance, and Viraha, separation. Jai Shri Krishna Das Babaji Ki. Yeah. I have a little comment. You have some comment? Yes. So, hearing this story, we may remember one leader. So Krishna went to see, went to meet Radharani in the Kunja, or in Kunja. But some, some or other night time on the way, he met Shaiba or some Adama, who is a friend of Chandra Bhai. Then Krishna could not uh, escape. So Krishna went to see Chandra Bari. Chandra Bari is the rival of Radharani. So Krishna wants to escape, but uh, he could not. In the early morning, he became free. At that time, Radharani was waiting in Nikunja, and she was so much anxiety, she could not sleep. So in the morning, Krishna appeared in front of Radharani. 
And then Radha Rani say very cynical words. Oh, you have good morning. You, oh, now you appear now. It's very good. Oh, in your face, in your body, it's very good sign of loving, you know, making, love making. I think better you go to your lover's place. And then Radharani uh, kick him out, try to kick him out. So, like this Sri Krishna's Babaji Maharaj. So he went to Dwaraka. Dwaraka is the queen's place. Here mentioned Satchabama or Rukmini was there. So this is Dwaraka is Aishwarya Baba. Maybe some Madhurya, but the most of Aishwarya. So Radharani could not tolerate. And Radha Krishna's case, Krishna was kicked. Kick, you know, kick out by Radharani. But the Krishna's case, Manjari is there. So Manjari tried to help Krishna sometimes. And uh, Radharani's mom, Radharani, mom is, Radharani become very angry with Krishna. This anger and Krishna's eagerness more increased. Also Krishna repentance also. Krishna regret himself very much. And also he is so eager to meet Radha also. So this Sri Krishna does Baba Maharaj case. So he completely shocked because nobody could help him. So he was repent, you know, he repent, you know, he repent so much and feel separation from Radharani. This kind of crying so much eagerness for Radharani, it seems Krishna Radharani giving special mercy upon Sri Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj so that he can throw out, uh, he can burn out all obstacles, of all unwanted things to attain Radharani. This I feel this is Radharani got special mercy. I, I, Radharani, Radharani gave him a special mercy. Because sometimes Gurudev angry or Radha angry. Sometimes Radha angry to Manjari. In Virapax Manjari, or Radharani says he mentioned. Because he she, she tried to bring Sashbelto from Kunja. But Radha could detect what is he doing. And then Radha Nani also could find out. So Radha Nani said to Torashi, Why you are so stupid? Because Radha could find out what you are doing. So you are stupid. And then Radharani, so angry, kick him out. But also that is a special mercy. Because Radharani accept him like own. This, this also, this case, 
Baba's case also, I feel. Brother Nani gave special mercy upon him. And then he may come near to Swamiji. That's. I have some questions to this uh, coming that, you know, first of all, I want to know is, was he a fixed Darcy from the beginning? His name was Siddha. So, you know, he must have had some uh, cities. And then another question comes to me, or was it used as an example to show us to show all the Bhaktas and all the Dasis how uh, you know how how much we should listen also then when Srimati Radhika is speaking to us. It is very uncommon that these high elevated souls will not listen to the voice of Srimati Radhika. And then again the third question comes when I hear that he left his body in the fire of separation. <laughs> that is also very uh, special, special um, event. So what is your feeling on this? Is he, he was not a real Satyabama Dasi. He, he went there by some Desire for pilgrimage, was this a desire for like into Vaidhi Bhakti? Maybe someone can clarify this. You want to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's my feeling, but I think there is like one small book, Mariri. Swami Maharaj, he explained very nicely, like with some kind of uh, calculation, the heart of path uh, and uh, advancement that one has, and still how much unwanted desires, small percentage is there. So, of course, more one increases his um, advancement and advancing to all the stages of bhakti and more the, the unwanted desires like anarta or even just the mixed bhakti decreases but even if one is a very uh, in a high le elevated stage still it might be that some very small percentage of mixture is there although we cannot see that and we think that i can be so fixed and but guru can see that and uh, of course radharani can see that in this case, Sri Krishna Das Baba did not have a guru, maybe near close to him, who could show to him uh, what really was in his heart. <clears throat> and the Radharani could see that. My feeling is that it was just, let's say, next to the full realization of his service and Swarup in an uh, absolute way, without any mixture. And what happened to him, it was just like a yeah, example and mercy of Radharani to make him in advance in a very fast way and to burn all the mixer, bhakti mixer that just he had, even a small percentage. So she known that he actually appeared in a dream to him and by advising not to go there, she, she know that he would anyway go. Maybe she made on purpose. Like it happens a lot that they say to us, we would have also don't do that. Then we feel like, oh, maybe what is there behind? Maybe I feel to do. <laughs> we feel more taste when something is like uh, neglected to us to do. Mm. So she know that he would have gone there and that he would have taken the stamp of Dvaraka. And she made it on purpose so that he could uh, do this process and, uh, and board in the fire of separation. and to this vira and repentance burn the fire of whatever was little left in his Shuddha Bhakti to become fully Shuddha. So, yeah, this is my 
thinking on that. Yeah, but very good point. This book does not mention which Sampradaya Sri Krishna Das Babaji, who is Gurudev, is not mentioned. So we don't know really his Manjari Baba, Saki Baba. But at least we can say he has desire to go to Dwaraka. So that means he has Sanchari. He has not fixing one, one Baba. So this is for us, someone who practice Raganuga Bhakti, especially Rupanuga Bhakti, to especially to, to visiting outside Braja, especially like Dwaraka, and attach the Aishwara Baba. This is very dangerous. So Shridharaji telling us, so even though if we have small amount of attachment or material thing or even spiritual thing, like Aishwarya Baba, then it is difficult to, difficult to attain desire goal, especially to, to, to get Buraja Baba. This nothing mentioned, so we don't know who he is. But this is, I think this is Dr. Kapo. He is he said in the beginning that all are actually God of Ishnav except one or two, but it should be also God of Ishnav. Yeah. Go there, Bajra. Yeah, yeah. It's a good question. Is mean go there, Bajra, with Manjali Baba? You, 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 you want to say? No, no. It was Kapoor himself is saying that uh, he's a good question. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know even what I am, so. But uh, I think you know, Dr. Kapo mentioned this this past time because we have so much we can get so much lesson to kind of try to fix one point to to visiting Dwaraka also dangerous. <laughs> And uh, also this biraha separation is very important. And this is uh, we could run. I think Suniti Didi, she knows the answer. But sometimes, you know, she's... Uh, Not just, really. I <laughs> No, I was just... Uh, I'm not... Um, no, sometimes I'm puzzled because it seems that it seems very strict. It reminds me also of the story when Mahaprabhu was chastising this Chota Haridas. Mm. And, uh, you know, sometimes I just think, wow, this was very strict. And also what happened to this Baba, it seems to be very strict. But on the other hand, we can also feel that maybe his feelings, like uh, Shrida said, they were so purified, then he becomes very pure. And then in his uh, separation feelings, when he left his body, then he was uh, ready to go to Swamini. I don't know, maybe like this, you know, it's this, this, uh, these stories, they have always a teaching and a blessing in them. I, I'm, I'm convinced of this. I just try to um get the whole picture with your help actually maybe radarani want him to back to spiritual world because it seems not so very old maybe 50 something 50. Right? 50. 50. so maybe at that time 50 is maybe quite older but uh, mm. still not so very old so some fortunate person 
can go to spiritual world very, you know, quickly. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yes, it's interesting. It, it's interesting. I mean, we have heard the story from Gurudev also many times. It's given the story as an example that we should be really fixed and not and watch our other desires. Very, uh, yeah, it makes me think and feel how, where am I, you know, in this regard? <laughs> This is uh, this is very subtle thing, you know. And also, I feel like uh, if we experience from beginning, you know, if we if we go to many holy places from beginning, or if we experience household drive, or you know, some feeling some subtle material desire, then you know, more easy to go. Sometimes, sometimes younger age come to Buraja, like, uh, you know, sometimes Gurukur people, sometimes younger age practice, you know, like a parents insist, or you, you know, you must practice this bhakti. And then children, one says, but at 20, 25, and, and start thinking, oh, I did not enjoy, I did not experience this thing, or oh, let me try. Sometimes these things are happening in, you know, in our, in our kind of friend, and uh, so this is, uh, this desire is a very, very subtle thing. Okay. Even his, say, very, very elevated so the still has some small desire to visiting all the holy place. It's interesting. Hello? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember uh, being all the book Srimad Bhagavad. And at first, it may seem, my God, there are so many stories. Stories about this, a story about this, a story about this devotee and this devotee. But the title of the book is Beautiful Personality of God. And to me, uh, so Srimad Bhagata means actually the it's a story of how Radha and Krishna, it's a book about how Radha and Krishna are everywhere and how they are doing everything. <laughs> so so uh, there, if, if we, how to say, if we try to analyze, then uh, this came to me like, okay, let's go from the beginning, A, B. Radha and Krishna exist everywhere, and Radha and Krishna are doing everything. Meaning whatever we perceive, it's their glory. There is nothing wrong. To me, it seems like this. It's nothing wrong. It's just a story about how glorious is Radha's love for her maid servant. And Radha can use uh, whatever way, because she's everything, she's everywhere, she's doing everything. She can use every, uh, every of her energy, every, of every way, any way, to uh, make her beloved maid servant Come back to her. I mean, this is for me. This for me. It's all about, yeah, there is Krishna, that's Babaji, this soul, Siddha, <clears throat> soul. But actually, it's Radha <laughs> for me, <laughs> like like this. This, like, I, I see only Radha doing things. Yeah. Radha. 
Let's <laughs> so even she appeared in his dream. <clears throat> in my opinion, Radha made him go because now then he will go there maybe in five years. So Radha he appeared in his dream. And Radha made, made him go there, and Radha told him then, okay, you go back, because now you are not my maidservant, you are maidservant of Satya Kama. So if you want to become my maidservant, it's not the place that you have this stamp now. So, yeah. And then Virata. Again, mercy of Radha. There is no, uh, how to say, there is no, this is the most intense devotional feeling. Virata is the highest feeling. And it can be, I think it, it can be felt only by Radha's mercy. There is no other way. So it's all for me, it's all Radha. It's all Radha. Jai Shri Radha. <laughs> and for me, this is like hope and faith that everyone, everyone, when Radha decides, let's get my servant. I made certain from this world to me, then it happens. It happens. Buddha also said, like, I tried everything to escape and I didn't. <laughs> Radha, Radha and my guru, yeah, they want me so much. So, yeah, they made it happen <laughs> like this. This is my Radha. This is how I perceive. Radha. If someone who could dream of you know, Radha, even a dream, Radharani appeared to him, that means that he's so exalted. He's immersed. It's so exalted personality. Mm -hmm. Even dream, you know? Uh -huh. Ordinary person cannot dream Radha. You know, but uh, he could mean that he's so exalted, he's so dear to Radharani. That's, that's, that's it, we may say. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. Very good. All different views are very helpful. Are we going to read another story now, or what is the plan? Yeah, Shidaji? Uh, yeah, we have more time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. So, next story is of Sri Nityananda Das Babaji. Amongst the Siddha Mahatmas of Vrindavan, the personality of Siddha Nityananda Das Babaji disciple of Siddha Krishnadas Baba of Govardhan was unique. His Lila Smaran, inner experience of the Divine Lila, whether in the state of Jagaran waking, Svapna dreaming, or Susupti deep sleep, was continuous like a stream. In his waking state, it appeared as if was asleep, because in waking, he controlled his bhav and remained mostly grave, motionless, and samadhista, absorbed in deep meditation. When made to get up by his disciples for essential activities like bathing and eating, he got up like one who was in deep sleep. But in sleep, while experiencing Leela, he laughed, wept, or talked as if he was awake. Because in sleep, 
it was not possible for him to control Bhav. Therefore, it was not possible to determine whether at any particular time he was asleep or awake. Under the circumstances, he was not easily available for conversation. Nevertheless, people who came to him to ask questions and get their doubts and difficulties removed did not go back disappointed. Their doubts were removed and difficulties solved merely by sitting close to him. The most prominent thing about him was his unparalleled humility. Even in his half-conscious state, when someone came to him, even if he were his own disciple, he would do dandavat obeisances to him before the other did it. If anyone said anything in self-condemnation in his presence, he thought that he was indirectly extolling him. That was directed to him. Some, something was saying something by himself about, about bad. bad about but himself. it was, yeah, like uh -huh. I'm saying, oh, I'm so bad. Uh -huh. But you... You will be this kind of feeling. Because there was no one in this world lower than himself. And he began to weep. Baba was a Siddha Mahatma and the guru of Siddha Mahatmas like Pandit Ramakrishna Das and Gorkishore Shirom Shiromani. Even Krishna was under his subjugation on account of his bhakti. It may therefore appear that he only pretended to be humble or lowly. But there can be no question of pretense or feigned behavior in a Siddha person like him. The inner experience of a Siddha Mahatma actually makes him humblest of the humble. A small thing considers itself big so long as it does not come in contact with something bigger. The Siddha Purusha has the experience of something which is greater than the greatest in every respect. Not only that, he sees that greatest of the great in the smallest things of the world. Therefore, it is natural for him to regard even the smallest of all things as superior to him and adorable by him. Perchance someone would say to Baba, your such and such disciple has been very much aggrieved because you performed Dandava to him. Was it proper for you to do so? Then he would say in dismay, Now, what shall I do? Kindly advice. He is a Mahabhagavat, a great devotee, referring to the disciple. Krishna has kindly sent him to me. If my behavior makes him unhappy, I commit an offense against him. I shall not behave like this towards him again. But when the disciple came to him again, he would forget everything and again perform Dandava to him. <laughs> Siddha Nityanandas Baba used to live in Madan Mohan Thakur in Vrindavan. 
prominent among his disciples were Sri Rajakishore Das Babaji, Sri Nishrima Das, Sri Ramakrishna Pandit Babaji, Sri Gora Kishore Shiromani Maharaj, and Sri Narutam Das Adhikari. Sri Nityananda Das Babaji Ki. Yeah. Yeah. We can just meditate on this ourselves. Adam and Suniti, did you like to say, share something on this? No, I think it's amazing what a you know beautiful exchange of love and uh, this humility is a like you said, good thing to meditate upon. It's amazing how the exalted siddhas, how they feel, how deep are their feelings. So we have time, we can read the following yeah. a longer story. Yeah, this is all very beautiful. beautiful. So next story is of Sri Madhusudan Das Babaji. Who is this young boy and what is doing at the bank of Radakun at midnight? He has tied one end of a thick rope around a big Giriraj Shila and is tying the other end around his neck. Perhaps he is going to drown himself with Giriraj Shila in Radakun. What misfortune or grief has compelled him to do so? Is he an orphan belonging to a low caste who has been neglected and oppressed by the society to such an extent that life has become a curse to him? Has he been turned out of home by his cruel parents Has his newly married wife suddenly left him? Has he been robbed of all his wealth and has become a pauper? No. He comes of a rich Brahmin family of Bengal and is the most beloved son of his parents. He is married but the very night on which he was married, he renounced the world, wife and parents, and came to Vrindavan. The very things for want of which a man commits suicide have been abandoned by him. Then, what is it that makes him commit suicide? There is a story behind it. When still a child, he had heard about a boy, the color of whose body was handsome blue, who lived in Vrindavan, who was very joyful and frolicsome, and who loved to play it on flute. The modulations of his flute were so exhilarating that they made one forget everything, even one's own self, and made one swim in the ocean of transcendental bliss. He was so charmingly affectionate that he endeared himself more than anyone else to anyone who met him. There was none who could equal him in power. 
He removed all wants of the person who loved him and protect him from all ills and calamities. <clears throat> Nothing was more enjoyable than his company. On attaining him, there was nothing else that remained to be attained. His name was Krishna. Since then, he always thought of Krishna and was often lost in the thought. Nothing in this world attracted him more than Krishna. He remained completely indifferent to the world. In order to shake off his indifference, his parents married him. After marriage and before he was to meet his wife for the first time, he slipped away from home and came to Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, he lived in a forest, thinking all the time of Krishna and weeping for him. Out of the forest once in the evening, Madhukari. But no amount of weeping and wailing was of any avail. Meeting with Krishna remained a far off dream. He was told by someone that Krishna could not be realized without a guru. One day he was sitting near Keshigat on the bank of Yamuna, and the thought uppermost in his mind was where and how to find a guru. He said that every tree and creeper in Vrindavan is a Kalpataru, a wish fulfilling tree. Besides a number of Siddha Mahatmas are said to live here in invisible form, who try to help the Sadaka in his moments of difficulty. It appears that one of them came to help the boy. A Mahatma appeared. My boy, go and bathe in the Yamuna and come to me after bathing. to the boy's happiness when he heard this. Hurriedly, he went to the Yamuna and returned after bathing. The Mahatma gave him Diksha Mantra and disappeared. Gaining consciousness, he was sorry to find that the Mahatma had disappeared without even giving him an opportunity to inquire about his name. He told him everything and requested him <clears throat> to give shiksha instruction in bhajan. Baba replied, Our bhajan is and the deity worship is essential. The the relationship has to be Sambandhanuga, that is, in accordance with the relationship subsisting between the Guru and the Deity. But you know nothing about your Guru. Therefore, you are not authorized for Raganuga Bhajan. The boy burst into tears. For the road that led to Krishna was blocked for him. Baba advised him to go to Jai Krishna Das Baba 
and do as he advised. He went to Kamyaban and narrated the whole story to Kamyaban. He also said that he was not authorized for Raghunuga Bhajan so long as he lacked the of the Guru. But he advised that he should do Harinam and pray to Radharani and wait for her advice. But was it possible for him to wait? When he learned that he was not even qualified for the bhajan for which he had left home and everything, there was no end to his grief and disappointment. Life became meaningless and painful for him. How could he live such a life? He decided to end it. He embraced Giridari in the form of the Giriraj Shila and jumped into the deep waters of Radhakund. No one knows how long he remained in an unconscious state in the depth of Radhakund. When he regained consciousness, he found that someone had untied the rope tied to his neck and made him lie on the bank of Radhakund with a palm leaf in his hand on which something was scribed. He understood that it, that it was all due to the mercy of Radharani. As soon as the day dawned, he went running to Jai Krishna Das Baba, told him about all that had happened. to you. But what is written on the palm leaf is not very clear. For Raganuga Bhajan, Radharani's clear command is necessary. <laughs> he went to Radhakun and began to call and cry for Radharani. Radharani heard his cry. She appeared before him and do not give or disclose the mantra you have received on the palm leaf to anyone. Since then, he began to do bhajan in different. People began to call him Madhusudan Das Baba. Perhaps the name was given to him by his guru. One day Radharani appeared before Madhusudan Das Baba near the bath in Suryakum is a Shila in water deep up. On that she I and my two sakis are Kayura, an ornament worn on the of the arm, and Angada on it before bathing. The Shila and their imprints were left on it. You take that shield and worship it. Marusura's entered the kunda. The shila was easily covered. When he began to take out 
It seemed to be as slight as a flower, although <coughs> it must have weighed about 80 or 100 kilograms. He could easily take it out and put it on the bank. Since then, Madhusudan Das Baba became famous and began to be called Siddha Madhusudan Das Baba. Madhusudan Das Baba used to go to the bank of the Kunda late at night and chant the following line. Vishwambar Gorachandra, Vishabhanu Nandini Radhe. I remain engaged in bhajan until evening. In the evening, he went out for Madhukari. Mm -hmm. Several stories are told about Siddha Madhusudan Das Baba's Siddha Vasta, accomplishment in bhajan. Mm -hmm. On the ninth day of the month of Palguna, Shukla Paksha, mm -hmm. the Brajabasis celebrate holy festival in Barsana. On that day, in the afternoon, Baba used to get excited and run towards Barsana to participate in the festival in white garment. Mm -hmm. On the way, he fell unconscious on the ground. Incessant flow of tears from his eyes and saliva from his mouth made the soil muddy. Mm -hmm. His breath became very slow and long drawn out, and the body swelled on account of orribulation. He remained lying in that condition until evening. After that, he got up with a loud and frightening sound. At that time, everybody could see his white dress drenched in red, which was a clear sign of his participation in holy in his citadel. Once someone told to him, your wife has come to Rindavan to see you. She will be here in Suryakun by the evening. At that time, Baba was old. His wife was also old. <laughs> but as soon as he heard this, he went to Govardhan. When his wife came to know that he had gone to Govardhan, she also went to Govardhan. But before she reached Govardhan, Baba had gone elsewhere. The old lady understood that on account of her, Baba was compelled to move from one place to another, and this created a disturbance in his bhajan. So she prayed to Giriraj for his help and accomplishment in bhajan and returned at home. After some time, Baba developed a sore in his foot. It became very difficult for him to walk or move. He decided to go to some lonely place and starve until death. With great difficulty, he went to a thick forest at night and lay there. He took neither food nor water, but kept chanting the name of Radharani. Two days passed without a drop of water. On the third day, Radharani came with bread and water in the guise of a Brajabasi girl and said, Baba, why are you lying here? I am tired of searching you. You did not come for Madhukari yesterday and the day before yesterday. My mother has sent Madhukari for you. She plays Madhukari before him and said, Baba, eat. Baba had known the girl and her parents for long. He said, 
Lali, why have you come here? How did you come to know that I was here? Oh, I come to know everything. Now, don't waste time. Eat. The girl. Why will, why will you not eat? My mother has asked me to feed you in my presence and not to return home until you have eaten. Suffering of the body is an, is an insignificant affair. It comes and goes. Why commit suicide on account of it? Does suicide ever lead to Siddhi accomplishment in bhajan? Now start eating. Baba could not disregard the sweet and loving command of the girl. He ate everything she had brought. <clears throat> then he said, don't come again. The girl went away. As she was going, she turned again and again and looked at Baba with a mysterious smile. Simultaneously, Baba felt that the suffering of his body was gone. He opened the bandage. The band Bandage of the foot, and to his surprise, he found that the sore had disappeared. The whole thing aroused suspicion in his mind. He went to the home of the girl and asked her mother, Where is Lali? Lali is gone to her father in law's. When did she go? About three months ago. Then Baba understood everything. He returned to his cottage without saying anything further for fear of publicity. But very soon, it became known to everyone that Baba had been mercifully blessed by Radharani for the sore on his foot had mysteriously disappeared and his emotional state also had undergone a sudden change. He always cried, Parade Karunamai, and wept. Once Baba decided to do the path reading of Srimad Bhagavatam. The Brajabasis made necessary arrangements. Baba started reading and explaining Ras Panchadhyay, the five chapters of Bhagavatam relating to Ras Lila. Adom, child, which means child belonging to one of the lowest castes, came every day and listened to the path most attentively. The Brajabasis did not like this, but Baba did not object to his coming. On the last day, when the path was to be completed, the child came like one possessed by someone else and sat on Baba's lap. In the midst of path, he inquired, Baba, after Rasa Lila, where did Krishna rest? In Sevakunj or in Samketvan? Before Baba could reply, there was a loud sound like the explosion of a bomb. His soul took its flight through his Brahma Randra, the aperture at the crown of the head, and probably reached where Radha and Krishna were resting after Ras. 
श्री मधुसूदन दस बाबा जी की Share something or ask any question. Yes, yeah, he's asking. Okay. Yeah, we have a story because he's first time doing something. Yes. So, it's easy. It's easy. We have a story and it's easy. Yeah. Yes. This this book is very wonderful because all the Baba is dear Baba who is hundred to ninety hundred means uh, like uh, recently maybe hundred years maybe. 150 years ago. At that time, some Baba is really present. So because we we see in Chaitanya Charitamrita or uh, any book, but it very, you know, like 400 years ago, 500 years ago, and Mahaprabhu's associate. But uh, this uh, doc, this Kapo, Dr. Kapo, he was selecting recently, ba recent Baba, like in 18th century, 19th century, dear present. So he was collecting in all information here, and he wrote. So this is give us so much inspiration. Because uh, we may, we may be, we may become Siddha uh, following the, in the footstep. Give us some hope. Even though they are very exalted. So compared to now, still very now difficult to follow their footstep. At least we say this real story, 
within 100 years or within 150 years ago, it happened. Hmm? Maybe someone someone can also write now like a present to you know like a, within fifty years some sita is there, huh? Definitely. Even today is yeah, even today, you know, we you know somebody somebody who has uh, information, some realization could write. If you ask Keshav Baba, so many stories he knows yeah. of present of his time, like where he used to chant, meditate, and uh, so many stories of Baba's who had extraordinary <laughs> bhajans experiences and signs of sanctity, holiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so for today we had a lot to meditate on. You know, one day Guru Deva told us if you have friend of five Siddha. You will become Siddha. Five friends. Or Five three. friends who is Siddha. Then you will become Siddha. Okay, friends, become Siddha. So this is uh, who is five. That is uh, you know that is uh, we don't know. Maybe this is inspiration to make many relations here in Vrindavan, <laughs> meet many devotees, <laughs> and then yeah. <laughs> Well, so. <laughs> maybe Shridharaji, you know, you know, you live in maybe ten years here. Only my body, my yeah, mind some, is, you know, like some. Siddha. My mind is many places. You know, here. you know, you know. Maybe Shridharaji knows some, you know, Siddha, na Siddha Mahatma. I know Guru, uh, so that uh, for my small capacity of doing it's already. More than enough. Mohan <laughs> Baba. <laughs> but sometimes Kesha Baba tells some story. Mm -hmm. So if you like also to be even more inspired, as you say, 500 years back story, very inspiring. Then 200 years back, oh, so close, very inspiring. Then we listen to today's mm -hmm. stories, <laughs> even more inspiring maybe. So we can ask also to him during the evening time and uh, the one one story again share what I heard from Kesha Baba about the supernatural uh, humility of one sadhu mm. is that uh, what, there was one sadhu living near Uddhav Kund in Govardhan and uh, this recently Kesha Baba time Guru of time like. He got to know Kesha Baba by some other uh, Babaji. There was this sadhu was living a little bit uh, inside uh, the forest near Udapund. Mm -hmm. And he was very accomplished in bhajan. And slowly people started to know that he was a saint, that he had seen this. So many people started to come to him to try to give donations, to take darshan. But he was living very, very simple, just in a cottage. 
without anything. Only he had one book and one cloth, like one blanket. This is all what he had. Wow. And all Delhi Wala were coming with big, big cars because it's contemporary. So, you know, this New Vrindavan, you see always these very huge cars from Delhi. <laughs> so, this kind of cars were come, going to him and to take darshan. And also, of course, they wanted to give money, but he was never touching any money or any donations. He was not getting anything. But there was some robber who was living nearby. And they were seeing that daily these very, very costly cars and very rich people were going to this Baba. So they thought this Baba became very rich because they're going every day to him and they're giving so many donations, mm -hmm. maybe some property, even mm -hmm. the buying in his name or <laughs> something is there. It's a good chance to go and, and, uh, and meet with him. Mm -hmm. So this Baba was every day at home, only evening time he was going out to do Madhupari to take some from the Brajabasi's homes. So one night, these robbers decided to go to Baba to make a visit. They went to him and when they arrived, he was just in meditation, doing bhajan. And they called to him, they say, Baba, give us all what you have. And the Baba opened the eyes and said, okay, take. And they gave the book <laughs> and the blanket. He said, take, <laughs> you can take. This is all what I have. Then these robbers became very angry because they thought that he's teasing to them. They say, no, no, this is useless. What is this? We want all the donations, all the things that this Dillivala and rich people are coming here and giving to you. We want all. And the Baba say, I have nothing because I don't accept anything. I don't accept any book or, or donation or material thing. So the robbers became very, very angry and started to first try to search here and there, like under the soil and uh, some place behind, maybe hiding in the forest. But they could not find anything. And by their angerness of uh, desire, which did not get fulfilled, they started to beat, beat the Baba very, very badly. Everyone. So after beating him so strongly, they just ran away and left him. So the next day in the evening, the Brajabhasis who were giving food to him, they did not see him because he was such in a bad state that he could not go to them. So this happened one day, second day, third day. So then they got very worried because he used to go every day to take food from them. So they say, we have to go and see him. So they started from home and they went to the forest to Baba Bhajan Kutir. They reached there and when they saw him, they saw him that was always in a, his normal close eyes, Bhajan posture. But he was full of blood. And his head also was full of blood, broken head, and all his clothes, whatever. Like they saw that he was badly injured. And they got very upset and they say, Baba, Baba, what happened? What happened? And the Baba said, Nothing. Why? What happened? They say, Your body is full of blood. Someone has injured you. Someone has beat you very badly. Ah. Oh. He said, Oh, please. No, no, no. Three days before, some great Vaishnava came here and gave me so much mercy. And I'm in this state. But they were so great, it's a big mercy. It's no problem at all. So this is the. Story humility of this Baba, which is the consciousness of a real Vaishnava. I myself get offended every time someone just 